Herzlich willkommen, liebe Zuschauer. Most welcome, dear spectators. Perfectly here on the ISH Digital 2021. Well, dear spectators and listeners, it's now about uh, bathrooms. It's a room where we normally start our day, but of course we also end our day there. So it holds a lot of potential. And today we ask the question to know what a bathroom really does in sustainable terms with a view to climate goals, which I have very much at heart here at the ISH 2021, where this is a central question. And we also keep asking about the market opportunities of environmentally friendly products and uh, what uh, the German industry has installed in that regard. The so-called green bathroom is a future-oriented concept, water and energy-saving products, in environmentally sparing products, and uh, a long-term design are combined with one another and uh, also signal the connection to nature. There are two gentlemen in this round in a panel discussion. They uh, know the situation perfectly. So we have Jens Wischmann, Managing Director of the Society of German Sanitation Business, and Frank Reinhardt, he's a design journalist and trend researcher with FAR Consulting. Welcome to Pop Up My Boss Room at the occasion of ISH 2021 Digital. Well, despite the uh, digital fair, we have built up something uh, and we are happy that there is something real which can be touched apart from digital, and of course we want to show the trends and the future-oriented developments for bathrooms. Now we have the motto inside, outside. We want to show what happens inside and outside the wall, but it also uh, uh, includes outdoor, outdoor bathtubs, uh, and we want to show how much uh, can be seen in the bathrooms from nature. And the sustainability is a big issue in the materials we use in production, but especially in the materials used on site in bathrooms. How are they recycled? How long can they stay? Which means a lot to it. Of course, there are many green uh, uh, biophilic uh, interior design, also including uh, plants, plants in the bathroom. Why not? Uh, the environment is uh, very appropriate for that. So let's highlight some of uh, these aspects uh, contributing to uh, green bathrooms. Uh, and let me invite you to join us. Well, uh, in first place, uh, the foodstuff number one is uh, water. Water belongs to bathrooms, and it shall keep running. But maybe it should run a little bit more intelligently and a little bit less. We need to save water. Uh, of course, we don't have a water shortage, but the uh, supply is limited. Uh, so a lot has happened in this regard. It's not a totally new trend. Uh, water uh, has been with us for a long time. Uh, like uh, in terms of responsibility, but this does not mean to abandon, to abandon certain uh, things we like. We can even gain uh, additional uh, comfort, including the shower heads, just like standing under a waterfall, uh, celebrating uh, this atmosphere, uh, like in uh, water toilets, uh, where you need the cleaning effects and you want to have the same flushing quality with little water as compared to uh, using a lot of water. Of course, there are also uh, shower uh, water toilets, and uh, modern design is not contradictory to modern water toilets, uh, which can be placed behind the wall. And you can also see a new design in the uh, toilets, and uh, you find for further information on our sites, and this is taken up by all the manufacturers. Of course, it also includes uh, flushing boxes for small and big things. Um, there a lot has happened regarding the sensors. For example, you cannot only touch the things, but with sensor technology, it can all work. 
A lot of attention is uh, put on the type of production of things here, double wash basin, the first uh, certified with the Blue Angel product from Germany. You see sustainability already in the design of the products. Then, of course, also in the materials, in the production itself, in logistics and distribution, how are the things built, in logistics and distribution, how are the things packed and transported, and the entire value chain right through to the craft people installing the things is more and more affected by sustainability, undertaking uh, things to realize each and everything. And another decisive uh, uh, aspect for the future is uh, uh, more and more green atmosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the introduction to our today's subject, uh, and we want to continue this discussion along these lines, as if we had the time like that, intentionally, today is a special day, maybe you know it, that the World Water Day is today, valuing water is uh, the topic for this year, which is fantastic timing for it to fit to this year's ISH along the lines of uh, green bathroom. Let me introduce our participants. Uh, let me start uh, with the lady next to me, Yvonne Pio, Area Manager Marketing of Caldevai, one of the market leaders in the steel type uh, bus stops, which you find in many households. The next lady, uh, Dr. Zolna, uh, Head of Innovation, Sustainability Management of the Bergbaum Company, doing uh, bathroom furnitures. She's uh, con fully convinced. Uh, uh, expert in this field. Then Wolfgang Burkhardt, Managing Director of the Society Valves in the VDMA, also other heating uh, valves and fittings. He has dedicated himself for a long time on these uh, uh, aspects uh, like low uh, risk responsibility and the like. Well, let me first ask the representatives of the producers first. What does sustainability mean to you, and how do you try and go about it in your company? Maybe you want to make a start. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm happy to be around here. It's a great topic to talk about, green bathroom. It goes very deep. As you said right at the beginning, in the past, the attempt was made to save water, uh, to uh, reduce uh, uh, objects like uh, bus stops. And we dedicate ourselves very deeply to these things because it's deeply anchored down in the DNA of Calwai. 30, 40 years ago already, we started thinking about it, namely how to develop a circular material. Uh, we produce uh, uh, steel and enamel in Germany, and the products uh, have an extremely long life. Uh, staying in bathrooms for 30, 40 years, you can use them. They stay nice over a long period of time, and then you can take it back into the uh, value cycle again and recreate the same material the same product from the same material, so it's 100% circular, so it can stay in the cycle over centuries. So one thing is the sustainability, the long life in the bathroom itself, how long can you use the product, which is very important for us. But second, what do you do with it after that time? how to go about it, and cultivate is certainly outstanding regarding these uh, topics. Well, we hope that you have a lot of fun with these products for a long period of time, and we are also happy if you produce something new. So there are two souls in our chest. What about you? How do you go about it? Well, thank you very much for the question. I'm ha happy to be here. You said I'm a sustainability expert. Yes, I'm really passionate about it. But uh, it's so important in some total uh, that we should also talk about it uh, beyond the scope of the company itself. And uh, while sustainability is an often used notion, it's not specially protected. And a forum like today is an opportunity to explain to people what sustainability is all about. And uh, uh, for us, 
Well, this means, uh, well, we, that we do the most beautiful furniture of the world, uh, but also the social and the ecological and the en environment type aspects to it need to be seen as a full package in strategic terms. And this is something which I have done with Burkbart since 2014, because you can develop fields of action, be climate protection, spare for the use of resources, whether it's the global supply chain. And then you can prove by certificates that it's really true, that it's sustainable, and you can sustain with this. You mentioned the Blue Angel before. That is our last symbol that our bestseller, Equio, uh, is linked to sustainability in a tangible way. But it's also uh, the target since 2016. Uh, since we can trace it back, it's also sustainable forestry for our wood products, which we document by our PFC labels. Uh, I could continue on end in that regard, and my time is certainly up in a minute. But to us, it's important not only to tackle things strategically, but also to permanently work it in the team. and to prove uh, uh, with uh, documents and certificates in a transparent way. So not just uh, showing something which is renewables, but that you also consider it fully in, in your system. What about the valves and fittings? Uh, well, uh, uh, you really uh, uh, shows what it's all about uh, as a uh, representative of the fittings uh, industry. We are mainly interested in uh, drinking water quality, so what is entered into a pipe should come out of it in the same way, in the same quality. As you mentioned at the beginning, of course, we do not want to waste things, although we have uh, enough water in Germany. So it's responsible use of the resource, which is important, and everything uh, hidden behind it, starting from the design, sustainable design, a design which uh, uh, does not live up to fashionable considerations only, which is disliked the following years, so it's about uh, quality, about uh, uh, the uh, right use of materials, not only in front of the wall, but also behind it. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, had this in the portfolio for more than 10 years, and we point to the fact uh, permanently that we are moving along these lines. and. You may have found out uh, with a little bit of pre preparation that uh, transparency has uh, been put in the focus a lot. Hence, the final consumer shall see what they consume in terms of water and energy in the bathroom, because we have the right products uh, with that, uh, with uh, the displays, uh, which means digitization. Well, we have just talked about the process chain. We have seen that it's decisively important production and also in the material selection. Uh, so it's not only a task of product development, but the entire company is uh, grasped by each and every aspect. So let me now show a contribution from a crafts firm, which also took up this topic, namely Sebastian Fuchs, uh, but und Heizung. Uh, so it's not only a topic for the manufacturers, but also in craft firms. So let's switch to that contribution. About one year ago, we sat down together with a company and uh, they looked into our data and values and they looked into our carbon emissions and uh, we decided to plant as many trees as to make ourselves carbon neutral, but we didn't stop there. We are specializing in medium to 
upper scale bathrooms as well as heating systems of up to 80 kW combined with heat pumps and solar systems. We try to tell people that this is a useful and sensible solutions that the technical possibilities are much better and more sophisticated now than they were 15 years ago. We made sure that for every bathroom and every bathroom customer and for every heating customer, we plant a tree. So theoretically, our customers could actually go there and look at their trees and water them. We have almost as many apprentices as installers, and we train our apprentices sustainably. We want them to stay with us, so we don't have to look about on the free market for new employees. And of course, you have to motivate people to continue along the right track, showing them the possibilities that this industry has to offer. And nowadays, our boys don't take a piece of paper along. They take their tablet to the construction site. Every process, every set of data is stored there, and they can take an on-site look at what has to be done here and what is needed. Nowadays, you can't do without being innovative. And uh, we, the tradespeople, have a huge influence on people's mindsets. We show them that you can change something, and we are there for you to help. Sustainable crafts and trades, this was an example of how it can be put into practice. Now my question goes to the marketing representative. How do you make sure that the sustainability aspect that is so important to Kaldewey is used in marketing, in product information for tradespeople, etc.? Well, of course, we inform people comprehensively, both digitally as well as with physical documents, whether it really trickles through to the customer, the consumer, is an open question. After all, there is a fierce competition between materials, and we are competing fiercely with acrylic material, for instance. Instance, and we have surveyed the quantity of acrylic um, installed in German bathrooms every year, 12,000 tons per year, actually. So it would be enough to cover the distance between Munich and Sylt. And uh, the problem is to really take the information to the consumer so they develop an awareness of material and for sustainability in the bathroom. Of course, everybody knows if people build their own homes, there are so many decisions they have to take. And the bathroom is just one of these many decisions. Decision, so they will not focus on the bathroom 100%. And this is why we go for communication, communication, communication to the end customer. Because once the consumer has come to understand how they can build sustainably, things will be easier for them and for us. Well, is there a demand for sustainable products? Um, do people make it a criteria for sustainable products? Um, do people make it a criterion of their choice? Dr. Zellner, what does Burkbad do in order to enhance demand for sustainability? Do people ask for, say, solvent-free paints uh, or chemical-free uh, surfaces? Is this a topic that is up and coming? Well, Burkbad, as a partner of three-way sales systems, has to rely on its trade partners in order to convey the value con 
uh, offered by Burgbad. What does Burgbad do? On our website, we have all the sustainability labels and certificates, and we have a sustainability report that enables every interested person to look up what Burgbad has been doing in recent years. And I'm just revising the current um, sustainability report. It will be out in just a few weeks. Our position is that if we give out proven certificates and labels uh, and show them to people, this creates a fact that our trade partner can pick up and uh, communicate further. And it's not a one-way street, because it's not just the consumers that call for sustainability. It happens at the European level as well. Look at what they're doing with the Green Deal here. So our trade partners can be sure that if they buy from Burgbad, they know they are buying sustainability because we systematically care for sustainability. Now let me ask an expert who has been fighting at the very front of um, clarifying the labels, certificates, and requirements and uh, how they uh, inform us about uh, water consumption, energy consumption, etc. How market relevant are these energy labels? We have the feeling that it's not 100% in our industry, right? Well, I think for us it's a little easier than for the two of you because for us it's about water and energy and uh, people have a high level of general awareness. We did some surveys into that. So sustainability is a value. That's what 70% of consumers confirm. And it is an important part of branding. And that's why it is so decisive for us. And we do have the impression that by creating the right level of transparency, you mentioned the certificates, the classification system, the well water efficiency label, which tells the consumer how much water their tap discharges every minute, and if they use hot water, what does it mean in terms of energy consumption? Of course, there is still room for improvement. This is quite obvious. But we have to keep promoting and advocating these solutions because we are tackling the key challenge of our time here. You wanted to have a say, ma'am. Yes, I do believe that it is being accepted more and more by the market. An international hotel chain has certified Caldevai as the sustainable leader and recommends Caldevai products for their hotels. So this has shown us that there is a high level of awareness developing at various levels, and it actually leads to people taking action in order to operate sustainably. Mm -hmm. You uh, have gathered experience in the lifestyle industry, too, so people demand uh, eco-design and sustainability, uh, but then do the figures really prove it? For instance, it is said that everybody prefers to buy organic food, but then the figures speak against it. Does the argument of being green really make or break an investment decision? Well, what we see is that in the supermarkets and even in the discounters, people are willing to pay a little more in order to buy organic products. So indeed, awareness does develop. When it comes to investment goods, there is a kind of natural limit where individual consumers will say, oh, if it is that much more important, I would go, no. But since the entire industry has to change their mind, we will have to find solutions which are affordable and customers will choose them. <laughs> Does it always have to be more important, uh, more expensive? 
Thank you, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, first question, has sustainability really been received by the general public? The Otto Group has reported about ethical consumption in 2020, and they say we have found that people want sustainability, both organic foodstuffs and in the bathroom. So they want sustainability, and their study resulted in a percentage of 30, 63 percent willing to pay more if the product has been produced in a carbon neutral way. And by the way, we have been certified by the DGNB uh, as a carbon neutral company, and our best selling program, Equio, has excellent value for money and it has received the Blue Angel label. So sustainability doesn't always have to be more expensive. That's what I say, and it's up to us and the companies to offer sustainable solutions in all price categories. Well, the green bathroom, the organic bathroom, should we call it like that? And we want it to be no longer the exception. We want it to become the rule. We are going to uh, pursue this discussion further, but let us first watch a brief video brought forward by an interesting company that I have personally visited, the Raumprobe company operated by Hannes Bader, and uh, they have all kinds of materials that they exhibit. You can actually immerse yourself into the materiality and can learn about what contribution these materials can make to a green bathroom. A warm welcome for the ISH Digital. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I will talk to you from Raumprobe. I will talk about 10 materials for a healthy bathroom. We might as well say material that keeps you fit and makes you healthy. My name is Hannes Beuerle, and I am speaking to you from Raumprobe. I will talk about long-lived products, recyclable and recycled materials, renovation and revitalization, what's available there, energy saving, water saving, and uh, jointless surfaces. As I've said before, Raumprobe is the originator of this contribution. We are a fascinating place, offering the most comprehensive exhibition of materials, several tens of thousands of materials of all kinds are brought together here bathroom, wet room, high-level wellness applications. They are all considered here, so you're warmly invited. If you now feel like you want to touch and feel and see the different materials, just drop in. I have brought some materials for you to look at, and I would like to mit ein paar Mustern eben das Phänomen multisensorische Erlebnisse die doch get across the idea of multisensory experience to you using several examples multisensory experience is relevant in numerous areas this material looks like wood or printed wood but actually it is real wood with an interesting quality of being highly flexible so from a multisensory point of view this is absolutely fascinating and in the bathroom multisensory experience is of utmost importance. We experience materials with all our senses from the tip of our head to the tip of our toe. So all the more important it is to choose the right materials. Consider surface processing, beautiful natural materials, this is natural stone in its refined surface options. Here you can see how you can zone the natural material. You can roughen it in order to enhance the haptic and 
anti-slip functionality. This is almost a macro picture. And uh, this is really a beautiful development that we see roughening the natural stone surface. Uh, of course, as a result, you will have quite a lot of stone dust, stone waste, but it's not waste. You can turn it into these terrazzo tiles, and this is a wonderful example of recycling. Traditional digitization goes hand in glove in many areas. Uh, you see uh, uh, sensor type surfaces in bathrooms by switching on and off uh, water. Uh, it has reached uh, lighting long time ago, similar in uh, old type uh, materials like this uh, glaze, non woven, going back to 150 years uh, history in this company with the respective uh, history and experience. And uh, there's also a lot of experimentation with glazing, which you know ra rather on the back sides um, to improve uh, adhesion uh, by applying pa paints and glazing. You can also design the surface with digital printing or in manufacturer type uh, project specific individual solutions which are being developed very beautiful glazings in this traditional material in a project specific why of development. Recycled and recyclable, we have already mentioned it. We have seen the first examples. A development of which you wouldn't expect it, it for a start, like a, a, a film, foil, oftentimes used in, in the bathroom, uh, stretch blankets, as you can see here, there are um, vegetable softeners for, used for the production of this material, and after use, they can be perfectly recycled, even. From these uh, stretch blankets, generally, to surfaces, uh, well-known fiberglass um, wallpapers, uh, with an enhanced uh, development uh, qualities with ready-made uh, surfaces. On the back, you can see the fiberglass uh, wall paper in different designs, uh, so it can be applied uh, quickly and simply. The big uh, advantage of these materials is that they are highly robust and in highly strained uh, areas that have been already used for a long time, and they are well apt for full-fit, long-life bathroom conditions. Something is uh, which occurs quite often is uh, the wish for jointless bathrooms in combination with natural materials. Uh, here you see the uh, uh, an application of uh, various painters' uh, firms working with cold marbles, um, systems, and uh, Foods, uh, not only the wet areas can be designed with that, or the shower rooms, but entire uh, wash places or in open layouts, even in the area of uh, the floor layout, reaching from the open bathroom into the living room or sleeping room, where people are working with these coated systems. The recommendation is uh, that you should look for uh, people have a full command of uh, this kind of processing of such material. Then you have a lot of fun with these healthy surfaces. Jumping to uh, large format uh, tile applications, well, sometimes you don't uh, need to work without any joints, but just reducing to a few joints in new formats, 
also including uh, glass non-wovens, which have been hidden to a high degree with a large uh, choice of uh, material, highly producing highly robust uh, surfaces. In reconstruction, rehabilitation, many resources can be saved, and uh, systems are also in question, which also enable quick rehabilitation and modernization. Uh, so uh, bathrooms are subjected to functional change from a wet cell rather to a living style, fitness room style condition which can be seen more and more, and then you can see developments like this design where under ceramics a cork back is applied, and with that very quickly and efficiently uh, you can realize such systems in dry conditions. So in multi-sensor experience, it's about all senses to be involved, which can also be used in a material which uh, otherwise is used in acoustics optimization, as you can hear. Uh, there's this kind of structure, this type of design, which uh, is combined of a glass non-woven non -woven and glass granulate in different surface qualities. And uh, in this way, it can separate it again totally purely. And the acoustics conditions can be optimized very clearly, and thermal optimization can be realized, and um, sheet heating blankets can be optimized. Uh, and the fiberglass mat can also be substituted by a uh, natural fiber kinaf, uh, and the recycled highly ecological product becomes even more uh, sustainable and uh, ecologically valuable in this way. Uh, well, there are also young companies who are dedicating themselves uh, to this aspect of recycling, putting such recycling materials in uh, the focus and such uh, type uh, of material made of fully recycled glass material is the result of it. And if uh, the result is then even smart and flexible, then this closes the circle. There's also, okay, the question of uh, fully closing a shower room, whether it should be transparent or uh, non-transparent. Well, uh, there's also a new development with new material and can even switch quickly and efficiently from one condition to the other one, even on a uh, push button uh, you can uh, give a more open or non-transparent impression. Well, uh, having said this, let me dim out. Uh, let me thank you for your attention. And I wish you a highly interesting ISH Digital. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Ja, Vormittag haben wir nicht mehr. Well, uh, the morning is over. Uh, thank you very much. Nevertheless, it's fascinating to see what kind of new materials are being developed. We have worked with totally old materials like steel, enamel, glass, wood, porcelain, uh, uh, th things which can be used and uh, recycled many times, which can be reduced, stemming from nature. But uh, also very modern things are making their way with totally new great features, also considering the eco-balance. And uh, well, of course, BIM has also been an aspect in our discussions. It's not that relevant, at least not in private bathrooms. But you also need to document all the while what you use. That becomes more and more important too. And we have experienced uh, rehabilitation of the bathroom where old newspapers and old uh, leaden pipes have been used or any other things belong to special 
capital uh, waste. You know, so that was uh, quite complex uh, too. So one question to the participants in this context, uh, what does that mean in terms of documentation, including the responsibility of the craftspeople? Of course, they also need the right product information, which they can pass on to customers. <laughs> well, at Caldewey, this is also a big topic. We have tackled this a few years ago, and we have digitized the content. Hence, uh, the, the, we have uh, uh, documented the BIM data. We have also included the production data. We've linked up each and everything for the architects, the planners, and the designers to directly tap the data and use them. Uh, because this is a very important point, because they need to trace later on what has happened and maybe also want to duplicate uh, things. So a lot has happened in this regard in recent years, and Color is also in a leading position in sanitation and always heads up all the while. What about you? Well, of course, I need to uh, mention the Green Deal again because there's also an action plan on the circular uh, business uh, where a lot is happening very quickly. And in Brussels, uh, there is a lot of discussion about the digital twin because it's known not only about construction and design data, of course we have it, have them, but after 20 years, uh, if you want to decor the bathroom, you need to know what the material is, how you can repair it, where you get spare parts, how to recycle things. I'm really convinced that uh, uh, starting from the political level, uh, requirements uh, will be placed uh, to the various industries involved where more information, more transparency is needed for the customers. Hence, uh, you uh, need more um, information even by digital means on these aspects. Hmm? Well, this will certainly also come. Uh, of course, we also do it in a minor, uh, smaller dimension, also considering how to decorate a uh, uh, bathroom furniture in a new way. Well, there have also been discussions with the Federal Environmental Office regarding the materials that are used. What about the expectations of politics? Can that all be traced or is industry in NFX? What do you have to consider and fulfill? Well, the legislator is really making a move. We have a drinking water uh, a directive uh, uh, stipulating that so-called positive lists need to be established in which uh, industry is directly and actively involved. Hence, our companies only use materials directly and actively involved. Hence, our companies only use materials which are put in on the positive lists. Hence, the final customers and the crafts people also need to consider these positive lists, and then they see the safe nature of the materials which can be used. And uh, brand manufacturers, uh, of course, cannot neglect these things. Uh, that is quite obvious. That is all information which need to be closer to the respective users. So what about communication in that regard? In pop-up, we have already talked about it in the past several times. I was a bit skeptical, but the past few months have shown that the time is ripe for this topic more so than 10 years ago. You mentioned the automotive study. Uh, against the backdrop of this experience, so the demand is there. Is that a push and pull strategy? What, uh, so does the industry have to provide more information? Or if you ask installers and fit fitters about uh, bathroom planning, uh, are your questions uh, answered accordingly? Well, we cannot offer 
uh, enough uh, information. And uh, there's also discussion about the supply chain uh, law. And uh, for example, we've had the certification since last year, furniture made in Germany, hence the value chain here in Germany. That is also a proven thing with a respective label. And of course, it's need to be communicated on our website because due to Corona, we uh, get the feeling more and more that people want regional products. Hence, Corona is even enhancing certain things. So it's the best time ever to this discuss about these aspects, so thank you very much for enabling us to do so in uh, uh, this forum. So our time is up already. Having, thank you very much for being with us, accompanying all these efforts. And of course, this is not all information we have. Uh, we also have our website where you can read a lot about the products, the pr manufacturers, um, Instagram, chat, uh, which is offered by uh, the fair and uh, pop up by bathroom. You, there you find all the information, as you can see here. Uh, thank you very much for your interest. I hope we could offer you some food for thought. And we've had the passionate uh, representatives for these uh, aspects with us. So uh, take part in this kind of promotion. And uh, thank you very much. And, well, have a nice time. <laughs>